Good evening, everyone. Princess Peanut Buttercup absolutely insisted on welcoming Mr. Chip Coffee to the broadcast tonight. And so I have to introduce her. She's just insistent that I introduce her to him. And I'm not going, you know, there's really no need to give the man a freaking, you know, uh, uh, introduction because everybody that's in this field or even beyond it knows exactly who he is and the gifts that he brings to the world. Um, it is my privilege and my pleasure to um, keep him among my nearest and dearest friends. Uh, and I'm grateful that in spite of the fact that he's just done what I'm sure was a very long and arduous reading for someone uh, has agreed to come on the show in spite of that. So if he doesn't hang for the full two hours, nobody's going to worry about that because he deserves a break. Um, but uh, I think that um, our conversation will be so inspiring and enlightening and uh, joyful that he'll hang around for a while. So without further ado, please welcome Chip Coffee. Hi, darling. Hi. What are you Hi. doing? Good. Peanut. Buddy. I saw, I was hanging back, lurking backstage, I know. and I <laughs> saw that little nugget. What a cutie pie. Oh, she's the she is the most beautiful dog on the whole planet Earth, right? Right, right. down here. Right down here. I know. It's Abigail. Abigail. Abigail's yeah. my girl. You know, I... I think I've told you the story about how she just appeared at my door. Yes, on, on Halloween. Halloween. Yep. On Halloween. And lately I've been telling her, you, a little did I know at that time that an angel showed up at my door in a dog costume. I know. Isn't it something? I, at a time when I wasn't even thinking about a dog. I know. I just lost some dogs. You had just lost dogs. Yeah. And I had one left and I had said... I'm not going to have another dog. And God said, hold my beer or hold my communion wine, I guess, maybe. Yes. And, yeah. And she showed up at my door and I don't know what my life would be like without her. And I know you feel the same way about your little nugget. I do. I mean, she just, you know, who would have ever thought me? I mean, my last dog was 130 pounds. Okay. Wow. You know, a great Pyrenees. I mean, just huge. And I've yeah. always been a big dog person. You know, I want a dog as big as, as close to as big as a human as I can get. Okay. So I've got something to wrap my arms around and snuggle. And yet it works out just fine. This is the baby. This is the one. Who would have ever thought I'd fall for a chihuahua? You know, I said, and after Gracie passed away, I was like, that's it. <clears throat> no wow. more. I can't go through this again. I cannot go I through the this same again. Thing. I, I mean, said I just can't. Nope. You know, and then a month later, I lost my sister. And then I found out what real pain was like. And, um, but still, I went all those years without having, I went th three years without a dog in my life, in my world. And um, the universe said, okay, enough's enough. And here she was. And you I know, saved her life. And April my, had a hand in it. In my, in my entire life, I've never been without, without a dog. Never, mm -hmm. ever. And I'm 68 years old almost. And mm -hmm. never at any point in my life has there not been a dog as part of my family. Yeah. Because, you know. What's new they, with you, Perrin? Come on, dish the dirt. What? What's new? Oh. Oh. Oh, see, because, you know, I'm the interviewer. <laughs> since, since, since when? Since when? I want to know about you. Everybody wants to know about you. What's new with you? Um, well, I'm just, you know, I'm recovering from uh, COVID. And I really thought that um, I had uh, dodged the bullet. You know, these last couple of years, I managed to avoid it. And, um, and then I got it uh, probably either in the airport or on the plane coming back from Rhode Island a couple of weeks ago. And then I promptly went to Georgia to go pick up the peanut butter cup and gave it to my mother, my sister, and my father. Um, and so it has so you're been like the gift that keeps on giving. I, I guess um, it was uh, shocking, shocking, and I went, upsetting. I went, my, I went to my first event since yep. 
my first big interactive event. I'd done some, a, a, an appearance in Wisconsin where I was on stage, way separated from people. But I went to my first interactive event with a meet and greet and all those things, uh, hanging out with other speakers and everything. And uh, I came home on our, Greta and I, my assistant, my travel assistant, you know Greta very well. Yeah. She and I were supposed to come home on Sunday and our flight was canceled in that great cancellation of, of this past Sunday. And we came home on Monday and I think Tuesday or Wednesday, one of the other speakers tested positive for COVID. And so I've had an exposure and I've since found out that a couple of other people tested positive for COVID that were there. And, you know, it's, it's going around and I like you, have dodged the bullet for two and a half years. I'm quadruple vaxxed, but you know, it's, it's still, it's still out there. You know, I don't want to preach, but it's still out there. So I've been very cautious. I have, I'm 68 years old almost to have diabetes and a respiratory condition. So I've, I'm in that category where I've got to be extremely careful. And so, you know, I just, I, I went, I've been home testing every day and so far negative. Gotcha. And I went today to a drive through just to be sure yeah. and I'll get the results back. But as the days and the minutes, and the hours tick by, tick I'm, by. I might have again dodged a bullet. But it's scary to go out and think about being out in the world again for me, particularly and for other people, because I don't know where you are, if if what's happening where you are, where you're you're, you're it's terrible uh, down here. It's it's we're at almost 30 percent positivity. People Five not, is considered under control. People are not wearing masks anymore. No, at all. At all. No, I mean, and they, they stopped them on airplanes. You're in this little metal cylinder in the air, breathing the same air for three hours. And they can say all they want to, that we've improved our air circulation. You know what I say to that? Bull. Yeah. It hasn't happened. So, you know, you roll the dice. You roll the dice. And, yeah. and I'm sure that most of you and probably... Everybody watching this, I now know more people who have had COVID than those than who haven't have not had COVID. Yep. yep, I can say that's true too. And it will run its course. Um, my concern, my greatest concern, well, I took dad to the VA hospital a couple of days ago because yeah. he was really struggling and they ran a whole battery of tests on him and checked him for everything. And he got his report back today. And, you know, it came back excellent. He's 86 years old. You know, he's in, in really good shape. But, yes, he had COVID and um, or has. He's on the back end of it. And, uh, you know, he kicked it. He really did. He's got an did incredible they, immune system. Did they give him the drugs that are supposed to lessen No, it was things? too late. It was just he'd had it too See, long to even. My doctor, first thing I did, I'll tell you, I must be psychic or something. Because I went, before I went on this trip, I said, I fully anticipate coming back with COVID. Fully anticipate it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I hope that I'm dead wrong on that. Use of the word dead is a bad, bad word. Yeah, probably me. better word choice. I think that I'm really bad. wrong yeah. about that. But, <laughs> okay. you know, I, just to be, when I got home, even before I'd heard that there would have been a, been a COVID person tested positive for COVID after the event, I'd call my diabetic doctor, who is a good friend of mine. Thank goodness I have a good friend in my diabetic doctor. And I called him and I said, you know, that drug that is out there for lessening COVID stuff, Paxlovid, Mm -hmm. uh, you are on standby. I'm tiptoeing back out into the world, which he gave me permission to do masked as often as possible. Yeah. But I said, I just want you on standby to call in a prescription for Paxlovid so I can start taking it. There's another drug also that's out there that starts with an M that I don't remember. But if anybody gets it within the first five days, hop on that drug because supposedly it's a game changer with how severe your symptom or your, your, yeah, your, your, your manifestation of COVID will be. Let's not talk about COVID anymore. I don't want to talk about COVID. I know let's, you know, I mean, my mother has gotten through this. That's all I care about. You know, the rest of it, I'll heal. I'll be fine. I'm going to Scotland in, a, in about a week. And I've never been across the pond before. I'm going with Maria Schmidt and her mysterious um, adventure tour okay. with Rick McCollum as my cohort and okay. uh, and uh, an escort. So 
it will be lovely and wonderful and I'm looking forward to it. And my mom um, has ancestors uh, from Clan Buchanan. So mm -hmm. she asked me when I go over there, what's in that glass? Is it better than what's in this one? Um, my sugar, my blood sugar was running a little low, so I'm drinking a Coca-Cola. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. That's good. I got coffee. I had to pump up. I had to pump up my blood sugar to keep up with you, Perrin. <laughs> well, you got, you got to pedal fast to keep up with Andy, Andrea Perrin, folks, because she's you, you, force of nature. Just, you know, keep up or fall behind. Well, you know, it kind of is like that. I mean, you know, I'm busy even when I'm sleeping. It's always going 100 miles an hour. So, no, you know, I'm there's that. Stuff. Yeah, I, I know. know but you know what? You're the same way. I don't even know how you shut down what you do. How I, do you shut that down, Chip? I just have asked my spirit partners not to make me be Whoopi Goldberg. I don't want to be having people come to me 24-7. You know, so they stand guard and don't let unbidden information come through to me. Uh, it would be a horrible thing to constantly have be pe have people be talking in your head, and I don't want that. So no, I've I've learned pretty much to flip the switch on and off. That's um that's amazing and it's remarkable. And I know you've been at this for decades, so uh, that didn't happen overnight. You were probably bombarded prior to realizing actually, that you had a service to perform to the world. Actually, I wasn't. Really, you know, because I've always been psychic. I don't know if I ever told you this story, but do you, I believe everybody is somewhat psychic. So do I. I believe that psychic is just, let's pull it out of the whole woo-woo definition. Yes, psychic exactly. To, psychic to me is the ability or the skill set to access information or energy that you cannot get using your five human senses. So right. everybody has some level of psychic ability. It's a sliding mm -hmm. scale, but people have different levels of psychic ability. Did I ever tell you this story about my birth? No. Uh, well, maybe you have, but I want everybody else to hear it. So. Right, so here's the story of my birth. My mother had had it. Well, let's back up from that. My mom and dad had a child early on in their marriage that unfortunately died when he was only 21 hours old. He was my oh. older brother. And they were told that because of her difficult delivery, my mother was a teen when she gave birth. And because of that difficult delivery, they were they said to her, it is unlikely that you will ever have another child. And she kind of accepted that. My dad went into, into, into the Navy for the Second World War, mm -hmm. and they didn't even think about having another child. So fast forward 12 years later, almost 12 years later, and my mother goes to the doctor. She goes, I'm having horrible gas pains, and gut, my gut's rumbling. It's not nice. What's wrong with me? Dr. Ransom tested and said, Carolyn, you're pregnant. And my mother says in her inimitable style, you're FOS. And we know what that means. Full yeah. of. Yeah. yeah. And I can't have any kids. And he said, well, you give it a few months and you'll see. Well, fast forward nine, no, 10 and a half months. And I still hadn't been born. <clears throat> well, they wow. found out what had happened was I was trapped inside my mother. There had been scar tissue that formed over the mouth of my mother's womb. And Chip was in the Carolyn condo and couldn't get out. Oh, wow. So they rushed her into surgery to perform a C-section. And as they were putting her under, my mother told this story to me a number of times while she was living. She remembers hearing the nurse say, um, her blood pressure is plummeting. We're losing her. And she said two, she called them angels, appeared, everything else vanished in the room around her. Mm -hmm. And she was going under, under anesthesia. And two angels appeared on either side of the table and started to lift her soul out of her body. And she looked at them and said, please, please don't take me. I don't want to leave my baby. And they looked at each other, smiled down at my mother and started to drop her soul back into her body. Wow. And as she crashed in, uh, into her body, back into her body, I was born. No cutting popped out of my mom's you know what so wow. they didn't have to cut however that scar tissue had vanished or disappeared or something had happened to it and i was i was vaginally born to my mother so you know i was born during a near-death experience of my mother yeah. and so it progressed forward and i lived you know i know i came to know things about people and places and things and like you lived in a haunted house or two or three yeah and, and you know 
I didn't start having two way dialogues with the dead until I was 47 years old. And I thought I'd lost my effing mind. Yeah. And, but even then, I think from the very beginning when it started, I quickly realized I didn't want to be that guy that was constantly hearing from people in my head mm -hmm. that unbidden information could keep coming to me. So that's when I tell my spirit partners, block it out, you, you know, guard dog me, sentinel me, guard me. You yeah. know, I don't want to have all that information coming to me all the time. So for me, it's become kind of a focus thing. When I know I'm going to be working, I kind of clock in, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And when I'm not working, I kind of am like, okay, I'm just leading my life now, not tapping into anything. That's, you know, you never did tell me that story, which I'm shocked for as much as we've talked. As as we know I didn't it's... know that. But now you get to see my actual uh, response to it, which is amazing. Uh, it's you know, been an thing. incredible story. It really is. Um John Tenney told me the story of uh, pr just prior to his birth, his mother being in a car, his father going into a grocery store, standing in front of plate glass windows, holding up things that she would, you know, maybe want that she was craving. And something told her to get out of the car, get out of the car. And she was big, big pregnant with John. And, um, and she just didn't want to get out of the car. And, and, and she heard a voice that said, get out of the car. And she did. And somebody that was completely out of control um, came flying through that parking lot and hit her family's car, her, her, their car so hard that it went right through the plate glass windows of the grocery store. Oh my it would gosh. have been the end of both of them. And even her husband, because he was standing in there, he had just walked away with a bag of chips to go buy for. He was standing right there in front of the plate glass door. I mean, so they kind of had like a, you know, a, a near death experience and triplicate that they were spared from by who knows, who knows who that was that spoke to that woman and told her to save herself and her baby. Some angel was sitting on her shoulder. That's right. You know, and I think, I that she, you know what I hope? I hope she got that damn bag of chips. I hope so too. And I, I hope, hope she enjoyed she, every I crunch because you know, Lay's potato chips, you can't eat just one. No. So, you know, here's the, the thing. I, what I find is that as I maneuver around in this field of uh, an eclectic mix of people is the nicest way to put it. Um, yeah. But that I was think, generous. That was very generous. I know. <laughs> uh, I um, I find it fascinating that so many of us have had truly extraordinary experiences um, that have shaped us, that have altered us, that have transformed us into what I I I wouldn't I. I wouldn't describe it as, you know, higher beings. I know that there are higher beings and, you know, we're mere mortals, but, um, but more enlightened souls, I guess, you know, we just seem to be able to tap into things that other people don't and hear things that other people don't necessarily hear and see things others don't. And, um, and I, and it's a gift. I, think, I honestly think you, you, me. Wax, you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I wax, you wax poetic about it. I'm a little more, um, how do I want to say it? I'm a little more jaded about it. I would just say that we are neurotic weirdos. That's pretty mm. much what we are, mm. you know, and I'm so fortunate to have my card as membership into that, that gang and to be around all of you who, our kindred spirits. Ha ha. I just plugged my own show. Did you see you that? Did. That was, you just that was did. good, wasn't it? That was a smooth, that was smooth, as smooth as, as say, uh, my hood, swoop, smooth yes. move. Yeah, it was it better smooth. than Barbara Streisand on her third album. I'm telling you. Do you know, here's a little bit of something. I grew up for part of my life in a little town called Elmira, New York. I know that. And Barbara Streisand's father or stepfather worked at the prison in Elmira. Wow. I didn't know that. You know who else is from my wire? Who? I'm just going to give you all the chipped coffee skinny tonight. Also from Elmira, New York. 
Mark Twain married a woman there and did a lot of his work there. Mm -hmm. um, Tommy Hilfiger. Oh, really? The designer. Yep. Um, one of the female astronauts. Brian Williams spent part of his life in Elmira, the NBC newscaster. Yep. yep. Um, I'm ashamed of this one, but Janine Pirro. Um, oh. Judge Janine. What is wrong with that woman? Oh, my God. Don't even right. get me started. No, 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 I know. Oh, my God. Janine Pirro. <sighs> and it was a big... Remember Harriet Beecher Stowe, who wrote Battle Hymn of the Republic? Yes. yes. Her brother, Thomas K. Beecher, was a huge abolitionist minister at Park Church in Elmira. And Park Church was very big in the abolitionist movement and the Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. And Harriet Beecher Stowe, who wrote that was his sister. And I actually, for two years of my life, went to Thomas K. Beecher Elementary School in Elmira. Oh, so Elmira's awesome. a really cool little town. I went to college there, was born there. Went kind of back and forth between South Carolina, which is where my parents were born, and to Elmira when I was a kid. And would you believe that this coming March, this coming March, I've lived in Atlanta for 40 years? Wow. 40 years. And I, yeah. I never would have thought I would have put down those kind of roots. I know. And you remember that city when it wasn't such a big city. It really wasn't. Um, when we first moved down um, from Rhode Island yeah. to the Atlanta area in 1980, right after we sold the farm, that's where we went to Cherokee County, mm -hmm. the northwest corner of Cherokee County, Salakawa Valley, the yeah. little town of Waleska. Um, and, uh, you know, we'd go into Atlanta, into the big city, and it didn't seem like it was even as big as Boston. And now- At that point in time, it might not have been. And it might not have been. No, it was really easy to navigate. I remember that. It was very easy to navigate. And um, and the 7585 connector, I think it was maybe six lanes across. 85 and, and, 85 and directions uh, from both directions 85 and 75 when i first moved here we, i was talking with greta about this just yesterday today or yesterday 85 and 75 were both two lanes one going north and one coming south and, and, coming just, south. <clears throat> and now at some points it's seven and eight lanes yes on 85 and 75 it's crazy and i live yeah. in the northeastern suburbs uh of atlanta and i don't really go into town that much you know it's mm -hmm. It's like people who live in the suburbs of New York City, they or Chicago. They, you know, it has to be something pretty irregular or special to to drag you into the city. But yeah, you know, a I, great show at the Fox would do it for me. I just went to see. I masked up and went with some friends here locally and went to see a show that my goddaughter's dad, Ella's dad, was doing mm -hmm. at the Alliance, which is our nice our primary which is our yeah. primary a, a professional theater in Atlanta. It is. About two weeks ago. And and uh, we went to see Ray in a show at the Alliance, and it was kind of cool oh, to be so out and nice. about. But, you know, you just don't you, – there if, if you live in the burbs you just and don't work in the city, mm -hmm. you don't really go down there that much. Yeah. Or up yeah. there that much or whatever. Yeah, it's there's really no need um, – it's really kind of got its own vibe and its own thing. And um, I really avoided it like the plague because I'm just not a city dweller. You know, I would much rather be out hugging a tree somewhere, walking my dog near the lake, you know, just just out of reach of the alligators. Um, you, and would rather, you would rather be out calling in your... your my owls? No. Calling in your people from the other planets. That's what. Oh, Andrew Barron. Andrew Barron. Yeah. You no. mock at me. You mock at no, me. No, I don't. You scare the shit out of me. <laughs> people of your ilk scare the rat's ass out of me. I can say that, right? Yes, you can say anything you want <laughs> on the show, that's, please. That's scary to give me that. that no, you've got that I kind do. of latitude. You do because I do it. So. <clears throat> now you got me coughing. I'm empathic. Oh what am I? <laughs> and don't make me laugh because if I laugh, then I cough. Ugh. But Andrea, you know, anything to do. Andrea and I share ghosts. We've seen things that we think might be demonic and all that stuff. 
but I firmly, my friends who are into the whole UFO thing and ET and all that stuff. Yeah. No, no flat. No, don't want any part of it. So ETs and grays and whatever, grays anatomies and whatever else in the hell they're called. <laughs> I want no part of them. None. You know my story about what happened. Somebody that had had an abduction or a, a contact to you, an abduction experience, was talking to Greta and me, and they said, oh, sometimes when people meet me, they have their own abduct, uh, a contact or abduction experience. And I'm like, Ew, no, don't want any part of this. Get away from me. So fast forward, Greta and I are sharing a hotel room. We each have our beds. And I, when I sleep, I'm all over the place. I'm pillows and blankets and in the, under the cover and out of the cover. Me too. So she wakes up in the middle of the night and looks over at my bed. And I've been in bed, asleep. My bed is perfectly made. Perfectly made. Mm -hmm. And she waits. She's thinking, that is so bizarre. She listens and waits nothing and then Greta goes oh shit they took him and she goes what do I do I, I do I call the front desk and tell them that he's gone do I call the police they're gonna they're gonna think I did it they're gonna think I'm the suspect I'm in the room with him where the hell is he and I don't know what to do and then her her mindset shifted and she went wait a minute why didn't they take me too so now she's jealous uh -huh. that i've been <laughs> and greta's now jealous that i've been abducted and she, and she has, has not but she's been left behind like you know yesterday's laundry and then a couple minutes pass and she hears the toilet flush mm -hmm. and i come out of the bathroom she doesn't say anything to me until the next day but i suspect at my age what happened to me was, even if I just had to pee pee, mm -hmm. I went into the bathroom and at night when I've got to go to pee pee, first to confess, too much information, telling you what it is, okay. I will sit down on the toilet because I'm not going to pee on my toilet and my feet. Not going to do that. So okay. I plonk myself down on the toilet and I am pretty certain I probably fell asleep. Mm -hmm. I'm a snoozing away, sitting there like, <laughs> but explain how my bed was perfectly made. Did they take me? And then when they brought me back, dropped me off on the toilet. I don't know. Yep. <clears throat> I don't want to know if you have any insight into that. Keep it to yourself, parent. I don't want to know. I want to know. I don't want to know if any of your intergalactic friends had any, because I don't want to be poked. No eyeballs being poked with needles. Nothing up the yin yang to be prodded and poked. I ain't into that crap. None of that. No, 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 no. So let's right. not talk about, we're not going to talk about COVID. We're not going to talk much about politics. We're not going to talk about aliens. We've gotten that out of our system. I'm done. Okay. All I will say, and I'll close it out on this. The first time I met you, you had your round um, uh, metal glasses, your Harry Potter glasses on. I looked through those glasses. I looked into your eyes. I put my hands on your face. You put your hands on my face. I recognized you instantly, not because I had seen a hundred pictures of you or a thousand or your shows or anything else. You know, yeah, yeah, you were on my bucket list to meet. But that's not what it was. I recognized you as one of my own. But none of those intergalactic people. That is one of my own. My darling, you ascend uh, from the Pleiadians. Uh, uh, okay, uh, you can uh, go ahead, go ahead. You uh, can. Uh, All right, that's it. I'm not going to say another word about it. Uh, but uh, I'm telling uh, you, I looked in those eyes. I recognized. I, uh, I knew instantly. I knew why you were so gifted. I knew what mysteries came check, with please, you. Check, please. <laughs> and so on that, that's all that I will say. 
other than there is absolutely nothing to fear, nothing to fear, nothing. All right. All right. Can now, we move on? You told me yes. that I could do anything I wanted to on this. So I'm actually, anything. you're the host, but I'm kind of turning the tables on you too a little bit. That's fine. Whatever so you let's, want. Let's talk about, pe some, let's just talk about a few people maybe that we, we commonly know. Okay. Let's talk about Zaphis. Oh my God. I was just on the phone with him a couple of days ago. I talked, oh my... to, him, I talked to him yesterday. <laughs> He's John Zaphis. You know, what's really interesting was one of the other cases, other than, than your amazing conjuring case and the farmhouse case, I will tell you that I met John when I was watching. I, I didn't meet him. I, I pre first came on my radar mm -hmm. when I was back in the early 2000s, when I was watching that wonderful discovery channel documentary of haunting in Connecticut. Yeah. And then I looked him up and found him and called him up and asked him if I could interview him for a magazine I was writing for at the time. Mm -hmm. And John and I became fast friends. He's, John's, John's a good soul. I mean, he's oh, yes. probably one of the most knowledgeable people I know in the paranormal arena. Yep. And I just wanted to give him a shout out tonight because I know that we both have a, a lot of affection for him and that he's a really good soul. And I'm looking forward to seeing him a couple of times over the summer. Um, mm -hmm. I know that he's he's somebody that you value in your life and treasure. I and you know what? That, that sort of leads me to say there are a number of people that we're very fortunate to be among in this paranormal community. Yes. We are. And that we very much treasure, you know, we've, we've got to say that we very much treasure our followers and our fans, that we yeah. really, those people who support us yeah. and continue to be interested in this crazy, the, the crazy things that we've done and will do. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I know you as, as do I appreciate those, those people very much, very much. And as I get older, I appreciate them more. And you're mm -hmm. like me, you mm -hmm. know, if you love someone, you love them with your whole heart. Yes. And if you don't love someone, they're gone. Yep. Got they're nothing gone. for them. Yep. Nope. Because we're not here for everyone. We're not. And it's incumbent upon us to empower each other with and by loving each other powerfully. And some people, some people won't let you love them. No, some people won't. Some people are only lovable from a very safe distance. Sometimes the other side of the universe. Um, it's just how it is. Uh, we're all in different places. We're all in different mindsets. Right, pause, pause for a minute. Sure. Did anybody else besides me see that weird shadow that just went to the left of Andrea on the back wall? Oh, oh, I don't know. That was I'm, fucked up. I'm never really alone, though. <laughs> you, there was this weird shadow that kind of went from just kind of around your head over to the left near the bookcase. Very cool. All right. So, yeah, That's just wanted to make cool. everybody aware of the fact that I saw something, a shadow across the wall up between uh, between your head and the ceiling. All right. Very nice. I'm so glad. They're here. Yeah. Oh, they're always here. They're always here. Or April's here. I mean, she stops by with such regularity that it really is. But she watches over my mother a lot. You know, my mom is very frail. And having to battle this illness that, I, you know, I brought to her, um, you know, to say that I'm mortified that this happened is the understatement of the new millennia, um, you know, but still she's getting through it. And and I, the reason I mention it again, even though COVID was off limits, is because I can't tell you how many thousands of people have with, I put one post or I said one thing about catching COVID and the word spread like wildfire across the, you know, the Western parched plains. I mean, it was amazing. It's like everybody in the whole paranormal field knows that I got sick and that I spread it to my family. And the prayers, the outpouring of love and affection, devotion, the prayers for my mother it would be almost sacrilegious if she didn't heal quickly. <clears throat> you know, I'm really, it, uh, we, you and I both know the incredible power of prayer. I and do. My I do. phone has been exploding with well wishes from friends, um, you know, close friends that would actually have my phone number. And, you know, then, uh, you know, every place else, Literally every place else. Go on, go lay on your bed, honey. That's everybody your has your phone number because I write it on bathroom walls. 
Oh, Schra I thought that was Schrader doing that. Everybody, everybody who loves you is trying oh. to pimp, pimp you out. Oh, excellent. Well, that's how, how weird, I grow my following. How, how weird it is. How weird is it that, and synchronistic that we both have mothers named Carolyn. And and that too. I was going to mention that too. Yes. We both have moms named Carolyn. Carolyn. Yep. 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 Oh, my father wanted me to give you his very warmest wishes and look forward a good, to seeing Roger's you. a good man. He's funny as shit. I'm just going to put the word out there. Roger is funny. And he's like me. He's an, old, <coughs> he's an old curmudgeon who just has no fucks left to give. He has no fucks left to give. He does not. Nope, he does not. But, you know, when he cares about someone, he lets them know it. And before you know I came in here tonight, you, he said, don't you forget to tell him. You, you don't want to hear this about your dad at 86 years old, is he? Yeah. Your dad's still a horn dog. Oh, yeah, I know he's French, honey. He was born that way. He can't even help it. I have no control over it. Your dad's still a horn dog. I know he is. Because I see, I, I see. Women throw themselves all over him and he allows oh, it. And I'm like, I, Dad, he's, stop. He's, stop. Yeah, I mean, he's just, you can, you can see him when he's around attractive women. He's sitting there like, and it's not like he's an old ledge, but you no. know, a guy can tell another guy, and, and he's, he's like, <clears throat> He's like enjoying the scenery. He has a great appreciation for the beauty of oh. the goddesses among us. Yes, he does. He thinks of women as moving artwork, um, animated artwork. He does. You're, get, and you're, you're getting you're getting poetic again. He's I a know. Horn, he's a horn I dog. I know. He's a horn dog. He's a horn dog. Let's just I cut to, to, to the chase. Okay. Just like my dad was, like I was when I was younger. You know, it's a it's a testosterone thing, I guess. I, I don't know. My tank must be empty. <laughs> well, my you know, tank must, am I just revealing too much information in this? No, no, I couldn't possibly love this more than I do. This was what this was what I was hoping for. You know, I you know, you know me. I'm like, you know, f f fuck the pretense. Let's just get right to it. And just be with each other on the show, talking the way that we would if we were out having a cigarette under the awning. At, Andrea, the you know what I like about you more than anything? What? I like more, uh, more about you than that you, there isn't any pretense. No. I mean, what you see is what you get. And, you know, people go, God, I didn't know you were so funny. Or, you know, I mean, when I'm on television a lot of the time, I'm in work mode. Yeah, And I take my word very seriously, but I am so, I don't take myself really seriously. Mm -hmm. My work, yes. My my reputation for my work, yes. Yes. But myself, I am very self-deprecating. I am very honest. I'm very so open. am I. Very humble. I yep. We're, you know, we're the same. I, we I'm, are. I'm grateful every single solitary day of my life for Me the too. life that I have. You know, and many times every day and not to get religious or preachy, I'm always saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything, for every breath, for everything I lead, yeah. I, for every thing I have, rather. You know, I just, that's the way I lead my life. I, you know, and I do believe in unconditional love, mm -hmm. but I don't believe in unconditional like. Yeah. I, you know, if someone does me wrong or treats me badly, I'm not going to put up with it. No, and I found out as I've gotten older, as I've suffered a lot of losses, as have you in life. If I can suffer the loss of someone in my life to death, or or even my animals, my 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 family and my friends, if you do me dirty, I can drop you like a hot rock. Like I know I've done it, I've done it, and you know, and I hate to say it, but in the last five years. <clears throat> the upheaval in the political environment and, and just the, the nastiness of all of it has caused me to break away from relationships that I thought were going to just, you know, be there ad infinitum. Well, um, you know, I don't and need I, somebody. I've had to, I've had to back away. I've had to. I don't I've need somebody. To. I don't ha need somebody who's going to be a clone of me from my, from my thoughts and beliefs and, and, and whatever. Nope, I know, nor do I know I. That you but, but being rational and in the same universe, if that they are, counts. If they are so diverse, 
that we can't, I've had to tell a number of people, I have a good friend of mine and I love her dearly. She and I have been friends since first grade. You do the math. That's 1961. Yeah. So you do the math. That's a long time. Yeah. She's on the opposite end of the political spectrum of me. And we were digging at each other on Facebook about it. She'd jive at me and I'd come back at her. So I finally picked up the phone and called her and I said, look, we can't do this. Eventually, it's going to result in the ending of our friendship. So we have to make politics a subject that we do not discuss. Right. And I've had to do that with a number of people in my life who mm -hmm. don't feel the same about certain things that I do. But if it's somebody that I don't know real well and somebody that I don't give a shit if they're in my life or not. Mm -hmm. I will tell you this. Talk about family. Most of most of my family, my father and my mother were both from South Carolina in the upper part of South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my family has kind of stayed in that area. And it's a very evangelical, yeah. conservative yeah. Oh, area. Oh, I know what it is. Yep. And I have some cousins who still live in that area. My cousins are my only, are my nearest relatives anymore. My parents are dead, my grandparents, my aunts, my uncles. So my cousins are my only living DNA relatives. And some of them are raging bigots, xenophobes, homophobes. They're mm -hmm. just ugly people, which is kind of the direct opposite of who I am. Yeah. So I've had to just cut them. I've had to cut the cord with a lot of even my family members. Had one family member, and this is a girl that married into my family, and I have never even met her, and she's married to my first cousin once removed, or as we say in the South, my second cousin. Right. I haven't seen him since he was a child, and she married in, saw my name on Facebook somehow. I accepted her friend request, and I posted something in support of the LGBT community. And, you know, which I frequently do as a gay man, I'm going to do that. Yeah. And I posted something in support of the community. And she came on and said, I wish you'd quit trying to shove that gay shit down our throats. Oh, no, you didn't, girl. Oh, no, you didn't. That was very unfortunate. Uh, Big mistake you know on her part. Honey, I said, well, in case you don't realize it, I am a gay man. And here's another news flash for you. I'm not the only gay and lesbian member of our family. So your husband has some of my gay DNA floating around in his fucking body. So smoke on that, bitch. Oh, God. You know, Chip, I really wish you'd work on, on speaking your mind and coming like forthrightly out with what it, you're thinking. It got better. Did Thank it. you for that. I, I'll, I'll work on that. Okay. It got better because then her husband kicked in. I don't appreciate you talking to my wife like that. I said, I don't give a flying what you appreciate. I said, let me tell you what. And his mother or his father and my mother were brother. His grandfather and my mother were brother and sister. Mm -hmm. And my mother had four sisters. There were five girls in the family and the boy. Right. I said, let me tell you what. I said, if any of the foster sisters were still alive, they'd hunt you for what she said to me they would hunt your wife down and beat her ass. <laughs> and now I'm going to give you 24 hours to read this comment. And then I'm going to do us both a favor and unfriend you on here and hope that I never have any communication with you in my day to day life. Adios. Bye. -bye. So mm -mm. I, I love my friends. I'm this guy. And just for people to know me better, I will be the most loyal, trusting, loving, you giving, are. kind, that caring you, are. you could ever have in your life. You saved and, and if me. That, if that sounds egotistical, well. No, it's true. It's, it's honest. I did what any honest to God, decent human being would have done under those circumstances. But I did it because I care about you. you but I'll tell you me. this. I will, I will give you and give and give until you fuck me over. And then if you badmouth me or hurt someone that is close to me or that I love, I'm done with you. You were, you were dead to me. And I remember that day in, in LAX. I remember that day very well. The day that you found out that your sister had died. I remember that day very well. You looked, you, you were literally in shock when I saw you at, at baggage claim at, 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 at LAX. 
I thought you had, you told me that you had found out and I thought you had taken something. That's how out of it you were. Yeah. And I just decided, I encouraged you to go home if you needed to. You were going to pull through the event. And we just, you know, Greta and Rebecca and I, we just said, we got to prop this woman up. We've got to help her get through this. And along with, you know, that, what a day, along with Craig Campobasso, our lovely yeah. friend in California, along yeah. with Craig, and along with his friend that was there, and her name is escaping me at this point in time. But that was the day that we went over and had this lovely luncheon at his house and, you know, went to, and, and um, Dick Van Patten's wife was there. Pat, yep. Yeah, from Eight is Enough. Yep. And, and you know, with that, not to take anything away from April, but it, it basically took your mind for a little while off of what you yep. had just discovered and you soldiered through that weekend and I don't know how you did it, but you managed to maneuver your way through that weekend. But once everybody found out, that's how our community somehow, somehow reacts is those who really are decent human beings prop each other up. Yes. Yes. I was, <clears throat> I was lifted on the wings of angels. Uh, yours were the, the two eyes that I saw first that I recognized. Um, and then I saw Greta and Rebecca um, walking behind you. And I, I know I was in shock. I know you said my pupils were dilated. I was in shock. You were out of your body, Karen. You were gone. Yeah. You had so distanced yourself from reality that it wasn't even funny. Yeah. And I just knew at that point in time <clears throat> that it was something that we needed to address. Yeah. And you took and care of me that whole day. I mean, it was like 11 o'clock in the morning and we didn't get to the ship. We were at the Queen Mary. I got, I think we got there about five or six. You made sure I got into my cabin. You dragged me up and made me eat dinner. You said, you have to eat, you have to eat. And we had gone to Mrs. Van Patten's house. Um, on our way back from seeing Craig. And um, I mean, we were all up and down the, the coast that day. I mean, for hours and you kept my phone plugged in in the console in the SUV so that I could, my phone was my lifeline to my family. Um, you uh, stopped, Greta bought me a box of tissues. I mean, you know, I, it, you, I remember saying to you, when you said you need to go to your family and I said, I'm with my family and between you and Greta and Rebecca and Mike and his mom, Pat, certainly John Tenney, um, who kept an eye on me all weekend long, stayed a couple of feet, no more than that away from me the whole weekend. Um, uh, and of course, Amy and Adam and Ben and, you know, I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, uh, you know, we had Aiden was there and we had the new Kirks there and we, it was, it was an amazing event. It was a strange escapes event. It was uh, March of uh, 2017. And- Has um, it been that long? I know it has been that has long. It really, really yes. been that long? Yes. My goodness, yeah. doesn't seem possible. I know. But and other than, other than that, that tragic turn of events, it was a good weekend. It was. It was a it was a very good weekend. I know that we talked about our friend Mike and his mother Pat. Yeah. She had come over to the United States, immigrated from England on the Queen Mary as mm -hmm. a two-year-old, I think, or younger. Yeah. And yeah. she had not been back on the ship since then. And I what know. a what a what a happy reunion between her mm -hmm. and the ship that brought her to the United States. And yep. we were talking about Zaffis. I said, we'd talk about some people, you know, I'll talk about Mike McCall for a second. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've had the good fortune, Mike McCall. I met him for the first time at a, at a gay pride parade when we were dressing as, as angels who were going to block the haters. And we were, we were part of angel action Atlanta. Yep. And we were going to block the haters from, from the, from the parade and I needed help with, I've never done it before. So I needed help. And Mike and his inimitable style said, I'm busy. You're just going to have to wait a minute. And I thought, 
bitch, who are you and who do you hope to be? <laughs> and and from there, it was kind of the beginning of a an amazing and beautiful friendship. Mike McCall's a good guy. Mike McCall's a good man. And he calls, he's been on a lot of excursions with us in the past. And he's coming back to, just so you know, I don't know if you knew this or not, he's coming back to Michigan. I know. To stir his debauchery. I know. And he's, we're driving up from Detroit. and he, We're driving to, we're all driving. Fuck that little, you know, puddle splasher plane. No, I'm not, not doing again, that again. Not I'm again, not doing not it again. again. Not again with all the Never. cancellations that there've been lately. No, no. Have you have you rented your vehicle yet? No. Um, I've got two friends that have a big ass SUV that are and picking us up. Yeah, perfect. Because the SUV that I looked at for the first time was nine hundred dollars, or the yeah. uh, minivan nine hundred bucks. Yeah. Rental car prices are through the roof. Anyway, Mike McCall. Mike McCall is a good guy. So he says, "All you ever use me for is being a pack mule, pack mule." Nice. So I call him that now. And he always drives. We always put him down as the additional driver and yeah. he will drive us. And I always remember to bring a pillow so that I can go to sleep in the passenger seat. Yeah. Because the way he drives, I would rather die in my sleep. Oh, good. We get I, there, he, I will wake up and you know, when you've got ways on your phone, it will tell you how fast your car is moving. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll look at it. And he's going 91, 92 miles an hour. And I'm like, Bitch, you need to slow down some. And he'll get some like, I'm the one that's doing the driving. You just sit over there and shut up. So we get there and I'm going like, Jesus, let me get out and kiss the ground. And he'll look at me with those evil blue eyes and go, well, nobody died, did they? Not this time. <sighs> nobody died, did they? Did they? Yeah. Did they? That sounds just like him. Absolutely just like him. But he's so lovable in his own inimitable way i was gonna say ornery way yeah yeah actually i think part of the problem is he reminds me a considerable amount of myself that which could be that there's some slight i mean and he'll sit at my table sometimes if i go pee and mm -hmm. he'll people will come up and think he's me mm -hmm. and i'm just like just sign a picture and just let him walk yeah, you know, let, let them let them think they met me, Michael. Mm -hmm. And his mother's a lovely lady. She his is so lovely. lovely. Pat's a good lady. Pat's well, lovely. Mike and Pat come to um, my mother's house uh, over the years. Have come, you know, yes. pretty yes. frequently. Yes. And um, I mean, they only live about not even an hour south uh, southeast. So. Um, it's, you know, he's like, oh, God, that's no big deal at all. He's like, I drive, you know, constantly. There's no big deal. And so we've had big meals together and we've celebrated holidays together. And, um, you know, it's been wonderful. That. And then COVID just took it, you know, right to an end. You know, Pat Fuck and you, mom. COVID. I know. I know. Oh, my God. I'm so pissed. And, uh, you know, it's just not been safe. You know, Mike is is a businessman. He's out in the public a lot. He's doing um, a lot of different things. And he knows it wasn't safe to come around my mother. Um, I certainly wouldn't want uh, anything to happen to his mother, who I adore. So we have not been able to get together for the last two and a half years. And it feels like an eternity. I mean, Christine, he and Christine are thick as thieves. Just, oh, she said to tell, when she found out you were going to be on the show tonight, she's like, oh, oh, I haven't seen him in two years. <laughs> she, she isn't coming to Michigan? She can't leave mom, honey. She can't. No, I understand. I understand. You what, day are, are you, what day are you getting into Michigan? What day are you arriving? Um, whenever you say. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't even, I, you um, know, I... <clears throat> Well, I, I don't know, but I've got to talk to Brad tomorrow because we got to get flights booked because I don't know if I'm flying out of Orlando or if I'm driving to Atlanta, leaving Peanut with mom and Christine and then flying from Atlanta to Detroit and then driving up. But it's like, sure. what, six hour? It's a six hour drive up to the if you, UK. If you stop or pee or get a drink or anything, it's six. Yeah. No matter what. People are saying, we may get in four and a half. And it's like, yeah. Uh, 
you, at you're... Warp Factor Six. You know, no, I don't I'm know sorry. how the heck they're doing it. I don't know how they're doing it. No, I don't know how they're doing it. None whatsoever. They're idiots. They're shooting off fireworks in my neighborhood, and Abigail just crawled up my leg. She's like, "Oh my god!" I know. I can. I can tell you already what's going to happen with this one. Where'd she go? Sunday night. Where are you? I've got oh, a medicate. There's my baby. There's my baby. I've got to medicate this one. Oh, uh, what's wrong? Oh, the fireworks. She'll just go back. Oh, oh, the fireworks. Yeah. She'll have such severe anxiety. She's shaking like a leaf. I know uh, her too. Just uh, thunder, thunder and lightning. Oh, yeah. Oh my yeah. God, it's terrible. And it was fine. Oh. She was fine the first year or so that I had her. Uh, you know, I'm in Florida. There's thunder and lightning storms so awesome. with such frequency awesome. that you better get used to it. And we and she was fine. I could um, count on her keeping it together during a storm until last summer when this property got struck by lightning oh, no. and it hit the, there's a metal, uh, like a partial metal fence between our backyard and our neighbors. And the properties are quite generous. There's a lot of room to roam. And um, I think it didn't hit the barn um, or the shed. It didn't hit the house. So the only thing that I can think of is that it hit the metal fence and it sounded like a bomb going off in oh, yeah. this house and i mean it literally shook my shook sternum yeah, yeah and she screamed i didn't know a dog could scream but she did and she ran and she hid and didn't come out from under my bed for an hour i couldn't coax her out no matter what i wanted to do to comfort her she didn't want to hear it she was terrified uh. <laughs> and it's been it's been an issue ever since and fireworks anything loud anything sudden or loud and um you know uh chip i've i've been really really struggling um you know when i've been really struggling about uh ukraine um i met recently i met a woman uh a couple of weeks ago who was on the last transport out of the um, airport in Afghanistan before the Taliban took over. And she told me about the bullets flying over her head and the bombs bursting outside the, um, the compound around it. And I remember sitting on the sofa in, in my parlor watching that last plane take off and knowing how many got left behind. And I've had the privilege to meet someone who escaped Afghanistan on that last flight that I watched take off and cried and cried and cried. And when I think of the trauma that my little dog feels when there's, you know, a bottle rocket that goes off, and then I think of the animals that I've seen wandering the streets of Ukraine, starving to death mm -hmm. at the trauma that they've all been through and the people and what they've been through. It makes me want to leave the planet. It makes me feel hopeless and helpless and, and in the deepest despair that I have ever felt for this planet. And you know, my show is called a world awakening and I always try to engage my guests in some conversation that causes people to think and causes people to expand their consciousness in terms of <clears throat> the way that they relate to this world and, and hopefully inspires them to action of some kind. You know what Joe keeps hearing, do something, do something, do something. And it is an urgency. It is an imperative urgency that we do something. Even if what we do is this, is just to try to lift each other up out of the morass of despair that any thinking, feeling human being is experiencing right now. You know, and this is this is a difficult time to be alive. You know the old ancient Chinese curse? 
may you live in interesting times. Well, I don't know what you would call this if not that, you know, and it's a curse for a reason. And when I think of my little dog, you know, trembling and shaking, my dog that never misses a meal, my dog that has everything that she could possibly ever want. She is the princess peanut buttercup. Her, the three words that she hears every day is as you wish. You know, I mean, that is her life. She lives in the lap of luxury. She wants for nothing. And yet a cherry bomb will send her into trauma because she has PTSD from mm -hmm. one experience that shook her literally to the core that she remembers and as I see, so that's microcosm, okay? Peanut butter cup is the microcosm. The macrocosm is too much to take in. It's just too much to take in. And I don't know about you, honey, but there have been times in the last couple of years, I've been grateful to have to stay home. Yes. I've been grateful not to have to, you know, I've got a, a great excuse for anybody that wants to plan anything, do anything. And I know you went through what I went through within the course of two weeks in March of 2020. I lost my income for the year. It was gone. Every single event that I was scheduled for that year, everything that Greta had slaved to put together for me over the course of the entire year was canceled, not postponed, not coming back canceled, gone the whole year. And as much as it was painful to see my income just, you know, dissipate into the ether, uh, I knew I would be okay. You knew you would be okay. And we got to stay home and you got to stay with Kenny. I got to stay with dad for the most part. I did go see my mother several times, very carefully made sure everything was fine. Didn't go see her until tests were available. Didn't. Um, but uh, I needed. You needed time. I needed some time to process all of this, to process we're, this. I don't know gonna, what to make of this, but the we're world gonna get, turned we're, inside out and upside we're, down. We're going to get through this in our own individual ways. And hopefully collectively we can help each other through this. And that's the only thing that we can do is that we've got to, we've just got to say that, that put one foot in front of the other. Some days are harder than others and, and, and we, we don't want to ignore what's going on, but some things we just can't control. And sometimes we've just got to step back from it and say, there's nothing I can do. And when I do that, I pray. Yeah. And, and some people say thoughts and prayers don't mean anything. I'm sorry, but. Oh no, you know, that's not true. I think that that they are in a lot of instances they're good, but they shouldn't be the only thing. There should be action that yes. takes place along with thoughts and prayers. That's right. Um, I've loved spending this time with you, but I've got a dog that's having a hissy fit, and she's okay. all over me. Mm -hmm. So I'm. I looked at my clock here, and we. I. I promised you I would stay with you for an hour. You did. You did. And I'm sorry to bail on you, but I've got a dog that's kind of needy at this point in time i understand and let me just say i've loved spending this time with you i'm looking Thank forward you. to to seeing you in a little less than two months we'll hang and have a good time and and socialize and and it'll be great Our re reunions are always great it will and you know what chip we'll never take each other for granted again we never will, you know, because there's tomorrow is never promised. There are no guarantees. And to I, see you looking so well, so healthy, so beautiful. You. I mean, you, you too. You Even though radiate you're sick. from within, honey. You do. I I think it's probably I'm a quart low on bullshit tonight, but I don't know. <laughs> it's not the coke. It's not the coffee. You know, it's your life, coffee. it's not the coffee. It's um, not the it, coffee. <laughs> it's, it's your light. And, it, light and your too. words resonate, your light radiates. You are a bright, shining star in the firmament. And I love you with all my heart. 
and keep those freaking ETs away from me, Perrin, or I will go, I will make you suffer. I'll talk to them. You. I'll have a you coffee talk, talk to with them. them. I'll talk. Okay. I'll talk, talk to them. I love you. I love you. Thank you, everybody, for watching tonight. Andrea Perrin is the bomb. We're all sending you positive energy, Perrin, that you're uh, you're completely over this COVID bullshit really soon. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you soon. I love you. I love you. I love Bye, you. darling, darling, darling. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Okay, so you know what? When I told you I was giving you chip coffee tonight, I was giving you a big dose of chip coffee tonight. And he is so lovely and wonderful. Um, and, uh, you know, Bill, I know you've enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, he is very, he's a very, very special man, a truly gifted soul. Um, and it is truly my privilege uh, to call him my dear friend. So it was delightful for him to, after doing two hours of uh, a very intense reading, you know, prior to coming on here, that he even had that kind of energy left is absolutely amazing. But I had a feeling that we wouldn't have him for the full two hours. Um, and so I want him to go rest. And what I would like to do um, is open up, um, open the floor to questions for you and for me. Do you want to ride this through the end of the show with me and we'll just do questions? Why not? But I will say, let me just bring my mic up because I always have it low when I'm off okay. the air. That was one of my favorite. And, you know, I produce a lot of shows on this network and I am the program director, but this was unbelievable. I had such a great time in that hour or so that he was on. And I think I can speak for everyone that's in the chat. Yeah. They truly enjoyed it immensely. I'm there was so a lot of great comments in there. A lot of great comments. I was, you know, it was great. He is yeah. awesome. Both of you are awesome. Well, you know, we, we are very, very much alike. You know, we have zero tolerance for for willful ignorance, for bullshit. We have zero tolerance for, um, you know, there are, we have zero tolerance for exactly the same things. We are both loving and giving in the extreme. Um, and that comes naturally to both of us. And we uh, share a lot of the same traits and qualities, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a little bit more um, blunt, um, uh, you know, than I am, uh, I have a tendency to speak what? more lyrically, wait, you know, wait, 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 or as wait, he says, wait, poetically, what? Uh, and, no and he just you? blurts it right out, you know, but, uh, it's, it's really the same. It really is the same. And, um, and there's nothing I wouldn't do for the man. I mean, literally nothing I wouldn't do for him. And he, and the same I mean, we've talked about this. I, you know, I, when COVID first hit and we first talked about this, he said, you know, I don't know what your situation is. He said, but if you ever need a place to be, a place to live, you know, I don't know, you know how you're, you know, what your situation is. Um, he's like, you can come and move in with me. I said, you know what? Same here. You can come in and move with, move in with me if need be. If things go that far south, you've always got a home with me, always, and bring all your animals, you know? And how many people in your lifetime will you know that you can say that to and mean it and it goes both ways? Yep. It's rare, actually. Yep. I will say this. I would love to hang out with both of you. I can't imagine how these conversations could go on for hours and hours. Even we've been around. to the farm together because we oh, did an episode God. of Kindred Spirits with Amy Bruni and Adam Berry. You know his show that he does um, with them, and um, and he didn't know we were coming. He did not. Uh, I don't know how Amy and Adam kept it from him. Uh, he wasn't exactly sure where he was when they arrived at the farm. Um, it's true. Oh, Fox Hole Friends. For Fox Hole Friends. <laughs> That's cool. It's the truth. Um, you know. It is. Uh, yeah, Fox Hole Friends. You betcha. I gotcha. 
And, um, and when we pulled up, my father was driving. Uh, I was in the front seat and my sisters, Nancy, Christine, and Cindy were in the back seat. Mm -hmm. And when we got out of the car, Chip walked over to me. He was blown away. And he said, I saw five of you get out of the car. And Cindy just turned and looked at him and she said, of course, I asked April to come with us. And he saw April get out mm. of that car with us, mm. you know, so that she could be a part of something that she so much wanted to be a part of in spirit. If, if that was the only way to return to that farmhouse in spirit with her family. Um, it was uh, a remarkable event. Mm. It truly was. I don't know if you've ever seen that episode of Kindred Spirits. It's searchable. It's, it was from a couple of years ago. Uh, 2019, in fact, before COVID hit. Um, and uh, it really is um, was a blessing being there with him. And he clarified some things for me, too. Things that all these years, decades later, I was very curious about. And having Chip there um, made all the difference. And I need to introduce him. And in fact, I will introduce him to Jacqueline Nunez, the new owner of the farm. Oh, because wouldn't it be so great, Bill? If I am met. not saying nothing, because <laughs> uh -huh. I am dying to go to the farmhouse. I mean, I know. Yeah. Well, we I can make all of this happen. You know, where there's a will, there's a way. I, that's not just a cliche. It's not just a bumper sticker. If you want something bad enough, fucking do it. Just make <laughs> it happen. <sighs> I, I, speaking of Jacqueline, how with how is she settling in? Because I know you you're close with her. Um, and has anything interesting happened since she's been residing there? Well, she does not live there. Okay. Um, she is there regularly, um, but she does not live there. Um, she has a home in Boston, yeah. and um, so she commutes back and forth. It's about an hour. Uh, between the farm and, and uh, Boston. So she knows, you know, she's got the route down solid. It's pretty quick. And um, she brings her dog Dottie down. And, and if she's going to spend a couple of days, she brings the cats. And, and so everybody is adjusting. What I will tell you is this. The whole vibe of the farmhouse has changed. Hmm. I can't explain it. It is, it's like warm, mushy butter that got left out and the air conditioning got turned off. <laughs> you know, it's like, you don't even, you, you know what texture and consistency I'm talking about? <laughs> it's not liquefied yet, right. but it's just about on the, that's how the farm feels to me. And I've done, oh gosh one, two, three events in the last few months up there, um, different uh, shoots and things that I've been working on. And the last one, I kind of brought her into that process so that she could see uh, what we were doing. And we had a, a film crew in from London. Uh, they were wonderful. And um, so she incorporates me into events and you know, the, the things that are going on there, some of which were booked prior to her, um, her assuming ownership. Um, oh, Jeff wants to come with us, Bill. Definitely. Jeff, Jeff, my darling, we can absolutely make that happen. We can. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have to get my broomstick out of the shop because <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, J Jeff, uh, tremendous work with Annie. That you both are doing i cannot tell you the feedback that i'm getting for soul school sojourn oh, um, on monday 6 eastern on kjrabb i will say this week we are off for the fourth of july holiday though so enjoy your holiday jeff your family all of you have a yeah. great holiday weekend a safe one yeah yeah but and, you know jeff have has been able to step up you know when i brought jeff into that process and it was something that i had um wanted to do for probably well 
virtually from when we first connected. Um, I was just so, so impressed with his, his intellect, his sensibility, his sensitivity, his, his gifts. It's, oh God, he is just a truly special man. And, um, I, I adore him. I adore his whole family. And when we were together at the UFO contact in Houghton Lake last September, um, uh, what I already knew was a profoundly important bond, which had occurred between us just solidified into a, a, a permanent state of being. Um, and he is my perfect partner for the show. You know, I, I had this notion, this idea that I kicked around between, I remember the conversation exactly um, and I didn't know you yet. Mm -hmm. I didn't, had not been invited to join the KGRA family. I, you know, I didn't know anything about my, I mean, that's how much my life has changed since last year. And you've been such a huge part of that bill. And I'm so deeply grateful for your friendship and your support, but you knew instantly the first time that I brought Jeff onto the show as a guest that here. he was something special. Yes. And for me to be in a position now with not only a world awakening, but with soul school where I can just have Jeff run with it. If I'm, you know, flying, I'm coming back from an event, I'm under the weather, whatever one text to Jeff and, you know, can you handle the show tonight? Boom, done. I don't even have to worry about it. I don't have to think about it. And I know whatever goes out into the world, I will be incredibly proud of to have my name attached to. And the same is true for this show. And, you know, beginning it with Tony Rathman, yes. talk about starting on a pristine foundation with Tony. You know, Agreed. and then moving from what we were doing together and moving to KGRA. And I know Tony will be back. There's no question in my mind. Tony will be back when the time is right. And he's in a position to, you know, rejoin this effort. But he's working he long hours. You know that he's really working. Ridiculous hard. hours. Ridiculous. And uh, but in the interim, you know, what I have discovered is the simpatico between you and me. And now I have my perfect choice to fill in for me on a world awakening, Aaron. which is my friend, Erin Bush. She's you know, tremendous. I, she's tremendous. She is incredibly well-spoken, real easy on the eyes, but you know, the guys, well, some <laughs> of the girls too. And, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I hope her husband doesn't get pissed off at me for saying that, but you know, I mean, she is drop dead gorgeous. Um, and, uh, oh God, her parents are probably, but you know what, Annie, too. it's, it's just a great, uh, I would say just a great family environment because it's yeah. the Rathmans, you know, the whole entity voices, um, yeah. It's also yeah. Ken DeCosta, George yes. Lopez, Cody yep. and Satori. Yep. I mean, it just goes on and on. And it, it, I got to say, I am honored to be a part of this. I like sometimes I have uh, like people over my home, like Travis Walton. You know, I'm more of the UFO guy. You know that. Mm -hmm. But I know it, him. Yeah, I know you do. It's like sometimes sitting in this position in this chair you know producing and doing what i do i can't help but be like a fanboy <laughs> and get excited to be a part of all this you know it's yeah i can't t it's i there's it's i'm speechless there's no words for it it's just such an honor and a privilege and a pleasure to be a part of this but like i said i am really looking for the day um hopefully in a few months to come and meet you and Mm -hmm. I watch everybody and hang out. Yeah. And Cody, Satori, Ken, the whole crew. Yeah. Jeff will probably come up. Maybe Chip yeah. Coffee will show up. Who knows? Who but knows? I am really looking forward to that day. But I want to ask you, what's going on? In, what's what's really going on with Ireland? You're going in a week, right? No, Scotland. Scotland, I meant. 
Yeah, yeah. I just got in my two, four, six pack, six double pack of COVID tests to make sure that I'm, you know, safe and sound and not, you know, I, I, I mean, I'm pretty much through it now. I've still got a little residual cough, but you know, for the most part, the headaches are gone and, you know, I'm, I'm doing much better. Um, but I just want to make sure I've got my tests with me to make sure that I don't pass anything to anybody. I, that would be, you know, I mean, it's been mortifying and devastating enough to have given this to my mother, the, you know, the woman who's, you know, who I worship on this planet. Um, it's also good to know that she was strong enough to get through it. My mom um, too. You know, it, it is, uh, it, it's a, a really scary thing because I've told you before, I don't know how to be me without her. You know, there she you just go. can't go anywhere. I've still got stuff to accomplish that I want her to brag on me about, you know, she can't go anywhere. This is all about me. God damn it. You know, I really <laughs> need, I just need her to just, you know, stay around and, you know, like, ad infinitum and um and and watch me do what i do and say you're a good girl annie you're my best girl you're my number one girl you know i mean and then i can just live my life happily ever after as long as my mother is with me yeah. so i can't even imagine not having her um and you know and i don't want to be one of those people that pre-mourns the loss of a loved one you know, I want to enjoy her and spend time with her and let her kick my ass at Scrabble and, you know, just do things together, plant plants and read books that we share and watch a good movie together with the volume turned up so high that I'm deaf when it's over. You know, I mean, these are the things that that I I live for right now is, is to be with her as much as I can to go to Scotland and get my mother a tartan from Clan Buchanan and take it to her and present it to her for her That's birthday. Awesome. She'll be 83 wow. in August, God willing. Dad will be 87. Wow. Yeah, I know how grateful I should be, how lucky I am to still have my parents at my age. I'm, I'm very grateful. And I just, I want to go over there and I'll be like, oh, mom would love that. Oh, mom would love this. Oh, my mom. Oh, here's my card. You know, I mean, uh, even if I have to have the shit shipped back over to the United States, you know, I'll do that. Uh -huh. um, but just to bring will... her happiness and peace and joy and comfort. And, you know, she can't go to Scotland. That's her, that's her tribal home. She was from Clan Buchanan. Right. You know, um, and she can't do it now but i can do it for her and take videos and say record that. the trip you know in in photographs and video and come back and you know go see her and share all of it with her are there any folks that she still has acquaintances with there is anyone there that you could actually meet and film them as well and say greetings? no no, no? the um Although, you know, I've got a, a friend in England. She's got roots in Scot Scotland, Ireland, and England. Um, she also has uh, roots way back in Scandinavia. In fact, my mother is one of, it's either four or six. I'll have to double check. But either one of four or six living human beings on this planet right now that have a direct mitochondrial link to a Viking warrior queen that was buried in the, I think around 1200 something. Um, her grave was exhumed. They buried her with all of her weapons, her horses, wow. her jewelry, her uh, artifacts, her artwork. I mean, this woman was revered in her time. And my mother has uh, a mitochondrial DNA link directly to this warrior, Viking warrior queen, which is kind of freaking amazing. And I'm really, really glad that I bought her the, the DNA kit that I got her for Christmas a few years ago because she was curious. But... Um, in the 1500s, 
um, Jonathan Riles, and I can't remember his wife Charlotte's last name, but they got married in the 1500s um, <clears throat> and uh, in England. And he and she and five of their six children are buried at St. Peter's Cathedral in Sheffield, England. And my friend Steve Evel went and found their grave sites for me when my mother um, went back through the genealogy and was tracing her ancestry. And um, the sixth member of that family, the sixth child, was the only one that, um, that came to the colonies. And he came to the colony of Georgia and is part of her family tree. Wow. I know. I know. History is so fascinating, isn't it? It's fascinating. I, I can tell you that my mom's ancestors, one that we tracked, believe it or not, because the Spaniards kept excellent records. Yes, they, they did. Back. Yes, one, they did. One of my ancestors was on the fleet with Christopher Columbus. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's them <laughs> some bragging rights, huh? It was, it was a science it was a science officer. They it was some kind of label like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was a I had the to one mind in the compass, huh? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's interesting when you go back in time. But as when you mentioned about your mom today, my mom went in the swimming pool for the first time in like years, and mm -hmm. it was good just to have some quality time, just mom and I having fun, yeah. you know, in the pool and. Because you cherish those moments while you yes. have it. And I know That's exactly right. what you're saying. Yeah. You know, we're blessed to still have our parents with us, you know, and we yes. got to appreciate that because there's a lot of people out there, you know, not so fortunate like that, you know. Yes. And especially in the last couple of years, people losing oh, their loved ones and not even being able to say goodbye, not being able to hold their hands. Going to the hospital. Yep. 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 It's, um, it has been. You know, and I, and I really needed to talk to Chip about that, you know, a little bit, too, because he and I are very like minded on virtually every subject except the galactic family, which obviously he's a little terrified of um, for no good reason <laughs> at sorry. all. No good reason at all. Uh, that said, um, but, um, you know, it. This is, you know, I, I was sitting with my father this morning on the um, uh, on the terrace and just kind of shaking my head and just shaking my head. And he's like, honey, what is it? What is it? Are you okay? Are you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fucking fine, dad. You know, I'm just so fucking pissed off. I'm so pissed off. And then he's like, well, what ab about what? And I was like, about everything about every ruling that just came out of the Supreme Court in the last week. How about we can start right there? I said, you know, here's the thing. They're the ones that are doing the service. They're the ones that are waking up and shaking up America with their radical extremist, religiously rooted views of, of an eclectic, secular society. You know, it, with with seemingly no comprehension about 330 million individuals that don't necessarily think exactly the way that they do. You know, this is a real wake up call for this country. I mean, when when the president goes over to Europe to meet with NATO and with the EU and the first thing that every other world leader asks them is what the hell is going on in America. You know, I mean, these are th this these are like really huge issues. And and my dad I just say, me and he said, honey, they're doing you a favor. They're doing you say, a favor because you know what they have done now is they've exposed themselves for what they are and their intentions. You know, the the counterintuitive notion on the one hand that they're pro-life but want to put a gun in, you know, open carry in every pocket in the United States, and that's supposed to be pro-life, that's pro-gun. I will okay? say this though. And then on the other hand, to see to see Roe v. Wade just wiped off the books after 50 years and two generations have come to accept that 
is our constitutional right to self-determination and being able to make our own health care decisions without the goddamn government peeking through our bedroom windows, you know, then uh, th there's a lot to deal with and a lot. I would, I would simply, I would say this just because I don't want to get drawn into the political thing, but I will say this. I think that we all just have to find the commonalities that we have with each other. Obviously, everybody's got their opinions, you know, on both sides. You know how that goes. The country's pretty much divided. But I think that the people that are in Congress, whatever political level, they've got to find a way to compromise. It's not going to happen. I, but I'm just saying, this is the way it's got to be, in my opinion. Got to bring people together. Find a way. Find a way to bring people together and find some commonality. You're not going to win on everything. You're not going to lose on everything. You know, not everybody's going to be happy, but find a way because this country needs to be brought back together. No matter what side you're on, we have to find a way to bring people together. And like I said, when people are here in my home, you know, we I try to stay away from that topic because it's always going to be a it's going to start a you know, it's going to start a fire. But I think that there's so much that we can all enjoy with each other with love and compassion and caring we have so much more in common um you know what i mean and like you said there are certain issues that on a federal level but on the state level there's still things going on um so it's a separation from the fed and state level without getting too drawn out into the political stuff but you know what i mean there's still states that are going to do things their way and yeah i'm pissed off i know you are I know you are massively pissed <laughs> off, <laughs> utterly, but, totally, completely aggravated to the extreme. But and see, I don't you can't let that see get it you. getting any better. I really don't. I think <laughs> this is our ultimate wake up call that people, I think that the biggest enemy in this country is complacency, apathy, um, willful ignorance. I really do think that that is the crux of the matter. And I don't see any path out of it. I don't. Um, and so ultimately um, it's going to come down to uh, a kind of a low level. So, you know, to me, it's the same thing as. Andy, as but I don't mean to cut you, but <clears throat> put it this way. If we all come along, Forget about just in our country, but in the world. Uh, think about if you were a species looking at Earth from the outside, would you in your right minds want to interfere with a species that's always fighting amongst each other, always at war, someone always wants to be in control and empower manipulation, and we're going to interfere with this species as violent as they are, in, in general spe generally speaking? Because war is never ending. It's always there's always violence. It's it just doesn't stop. So my thing is, my concern is looking forward, like people talk about disclosure occurring. We're in such chaos right now. Chaos. Such, there is such mistrust across the board. So how could disclosure happen? Now, a lot of people are concerned, Annie, that when you because i've been hearing this for the last few years like i said i'm i'm looking more at the ufology spot part of this they're labeling them as demons um evil malevolent it's just like nature there's a balance you're always going to have a balance good and bad it's just the natural it's the law it's it's going to be that way so i wouldn't be surprised if there's good things out there bad things out there but I'm I don't think that. I think that they've evolved to the point where, well, they don't want to interfere because, uh, you know, obviously we've covered this before. They can't interfere because then we don't learn our lessons. And, you know, the tests, these are the tests that come before the lessons. I am absolutely convinced of that. And it's a whole series. I mean, everybody's looking at each other going, what next? What next? Are you kidding me? Oh, we're going to gut the EPA today. What next? Oh, we're going to unleash more, you know, weapons in a society that already has a hundred million more weapons than people in it already. What next? 
you know, it, and that's where we are. I think that that's where we are right now. That's the stage that we're at, um, where we have got, um, uh, you know, the, the deregulation of, of all pollutants, you know, just go ahead, pour it out, you know, out into the atmosphere. It not only fouls our air and our water, but it damages the whole world. But you know, whatever, go make some money and stuff it in your pockets. That's the mindset that we have to defeat. That's what it is. It is that, that duality that we have talked about and talked about over and over again. One mindset is very simple. We are all in this together. We are one big family. We are all in this together. That's one mindset. That is my mindset. It has been lifelong. There is another opposing force to that mindset. And that is all for me. The rest of you SOBs are on your own. And that's what this, that's what this is. That's what this is that's going on. And, um, you know, selfishness and greed and, and ignorance and, you know, just convincing themselves that their way is the only way, that it is the way of progress, that it is the way of the future, when ultimately what it's doing is shredding our society and, um, and damaging the planet and, and everyone that is, you know, sharing this earth. Um, it is, uh, it is a frightening, frightening time for me. I feel absolutely certain that, um, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. Uh, I, and, and I think that we have to confront the notion that it is going to get worse before it gets better and to steal ourselves to, you know, prepare ourselves because forewarned is forearmed. Um, and I, I, and I really do think that that's where we are right now. And I can be as pissed off as I want to be. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter how chip feels or how I feel or any of my other friends who, you know, basically think the same way that I do, uh, you know, we can only do so much individually. This is about, uh, you know, tapping into the unified field of consciousness. And this is also about a crisis of conscience. So maybe the gas and oil industry just got completely, utterly deregulated and that there's nothing that we can do to rein in their emissions, their pollutants, and whatever else that they do to harm the planet. Maybe that's the case. But what if the people that run these companies start thinking in terms of, wow, we've got the freedom to destroy as much as we could possibly want to destroy in the name of the almighty dollar, but should we? And that's what I'm talking about in terms of a crisis of conscience. You know, how much money is enough? How much money is enough? You know, this is, um, this is making up for losses during COVID. This is the destabilization of the energy markets worldwide because of uh, Ukraine and Russia. But, you know, I can't help it. I am fiercely defensive. When I hear somebody say, well, you know, Ukraine's going to have to capitulate. Ukraine's going to have to give up something and negotiate. Why? Why? They didn't do anything. All they did was exist in the boundaries of their country that have been there for, in, in cities that are a thousand years old. All they did was exist. They were not the aggressors. Why do they have to give up anything of their land their tradition their history because as because putin is well aware as i'm sure a lot of the people that are viewing it is part of the old soviet empire one number two yeah. the ukraine is one of the richest countries yeah. in oil minerals precious metals iron lithium it goes on and on so it's also about the money 
Yeah, uh -oh. it's also about the money. And you know, you know what I say to Zelensky? Tell him to pack his shit and get the fuck out. Get out. <laughs> you don't be belong that. here. We already had this. This was all worked out. Get out. And oh, by the way, get the hell out of Crimea Peninsula too. Get out. You know, they can, they just took Snake Island back yesterday. They can do this with the world helping them. And you know, what an idiot who was so, just so threatened by the notion of NATO expanding. And his actions have what? What has it created? The expansion of NATO. It's, it's completely counterintuitive. I feel like the whole world has lost its mind. And we've talked and talked and talked about this, but I really do believe that at some point we have to, as a world community, stand up to the despots, the dictators, and the autocrats and say, get out. We're taking over. You have not served us well. You have only served yourself. And that is not just Vladimir Putin. It's not just Xi Jinping. It's not just Kim Jong-un. There are 63 dictators that are oppressing their own people on this planet right this minute. And what I see coming is worldwide revolution so that no single man any longer gets to call the shots about how the whole rest of the world is going to be held hostage by their whim. And that's what needs to change. That will be the culmination of the paradigm shift. And I might not live to see it. But I'll tell you what, while I'm here, I will call it out. I will I call it out I for you. what it is. I will say this, though. On the flip side, with all the money that we spend, we need to focus also on what's going on right in our country and helping the American people deal with inflation, the rising costs of living. I mean, it is not with the prices of food, the prices of gas. I'm really, really concerned about this winter because I live in a cold area. If this guy, if this oil, because oil is heating oil is more expensive than gas. So if yeah, gas yeah. is at five, heating oil is going to be close to more like six. Yeah. 250 gallon tank last six weeks here. Do the math. I'm going to be paying thousands of dollars per month to heat my house. That's a concern. We've got to do something to bring this price down because yes. it's going to hurt a lot of people. A lot of people may go without heat, hot water. Whatever, because they simply can't afford it, Annie. And well, you know, we do you know? have government subsidy programs, but you know what? That's just us paying for everybody else's heat and hot water. That's just coming right out of our tax money. While the the producers, the purveyors, are laughing their asses off all the way to the bank. Have you That's seen the, the price? Have you seen the price of oil on the open market? Do you know what we should be paying for gasoline right now? About two eighty-five a gallon, based on the cost to us of a barrel of oil. And here's the other thing: we're producing more oil and generating more gas out of this country now than we ever ever have in the past. And these companies don't release it into our society, into our pipelines without making a big, huge profit. And they sell it to the highest bidder, which also jacks the price up. So, you know, George W. Bush was no more responsible for $5 a gallon gasoline during, you know, the end of his administration than Joe Biden is responsible for $5 a gallon gasoline in his administration. Because they're not the ones that set the prices and they cannot manipulate the market. They can't do it. So, you know, let's place blame where blame belongs. There are reason, there are ways to mitigate the costs to the American people that these American companies that have gotten rich 
off the backs of Americans could do to help America right now, except their priorities are screwed to the wall. It's always money. You know that. Everything's it's related. always money. It's, it's always, always money. that's the common denominator. It, it does, always. It, it's politically blind because it's always about money. You know what I mean? It's yeah. always about money. Yeah. Uh, and, and sadly, the people, you know, the ordinary folks suffer from it. But like, I will say this before we close because we got like eight minutes left. Okay. My way of being is my definition of spirituality is being at peace with myself and my surroundings. I have a great relationship with my neighbors. I have a great relationship with my community. I'm involved. Um, doing this, I feel, is a positive thing. As long as I find, and being with people like you doing this show and all the other hosts and just being a part of I feel it's I'm providing a service. I'm helping put the information out there and being a productive participant in mm -hmm. society. I focus my energy on, on the positive because, Annie, if you let that negative stuff that's going on eat you up, it's going to take control of you. You know what I, I mean? am positively negative about the state of the world right now. Yes. And I am positive you, that I will continue to work oh, I know to, you will. to I create a, a higher consciousness, awareness. Yes. Like the show. Yes. A world awakening. But we have to wake up first. We have to wake up to the reality that we face. You know, this is a world awakening to our old reality seen in a whole new light based on the circumstances that we have inadvertently and sometimes deliberately created in our own world. And we have to take responsibility for that. And we have to affect positive change. I, get, I agree. See, but people like you, Chip, whoever it is, I think the game changer, because I, it's going to be life altering it's going to be historical for humankind when this all comes to a head i mean you know what you've been involved with um whether it's disclosure or i think when something like this happens that's going to be the moment that changes everything it's going to affect a global level i think all the focus of Whatever it is, whatever's going on, any distractions, anything that's going on, all this crazy insanity that's going on around us, I think that something big is coming that's going to change the The whole. egg is cracking open. We There is so much growth, expansion, and conflict within our egg, our 3D, five-sensory realm that we're cracking it from the inside out. You know my story, the chicken and the egg. They can't crack the egg for us. We won't survive. We have to puncture and peck our way out of our own limited understanding of our species, our race, our planet, and our place in the universe. All of that. And it's all about higher vibration. It is all about the resonance of, of sound and light and, and the elemental and essential part of what makes us human beings. And as that realization of oneness, of us all being in this together, of all of us in the same boat, when that finally clicks, yes. when it finally does, when that mindset outnumbers and yes. overpowers hatred with love. And that's inevitable because why? Because love conquers fear, good conquers evil, or none of us would be here anymore because evil is a foot in the land and yet it does not win. Love and always defeats hatred and fear. Always, eventually and inevitably, always it does. I just want to be alive to see it. I hope I feel the same way. And I'll tell you, I think uh, just think about because we got like four minutes left. But think about this. Everything that's going on or led to this point in history. Let's just go way back just to this point where we are right now. 
it seems like if anything is going to happen, it's going to happen soon. That's going to change everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something, something is coming that's going to change everything all at once globally, where everybody's going to say, whoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're all going to have to come together as a human society, not mm -hmm. individual countries. It's going to, I think, or even something individual people. Right. All but I think, it's all, I think it's any, I, I really feel that's coming. Something is coming. Yes. I don't is. know what it is. And I hope it's not a negative thing. It's not. I it's actually it's a very powerful, very loving thing. And, you know, you know, my opinion is that disclosure has already occurred, that we are the point of disclosure. I don't need any government anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world, I should say to disclose anything. You know, they're all the lying liars who lie. They always have been. You know, um, the UK has been more forthcoming than any um, any clump of countries anywhere in the world in terms of what they've already released in terms of their own um, uh, research and, and what they have found. Um, however, okay, one thing. Go ahead. It, it, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Disclosure has already occurred. It is now awareness, awareness on a global level that will change everything. And it's coming, it's coming, it's tick-tock time. I agree. It is. And I'll, I'll close this out with one last thing. I bet you when you go to Scotland, that's going to create a great positive experience for you. All this... Is going to just drain and flush out and you're going to be like this is exactly what i needed to be in this beautiful country of scotland and doing things for mom and it's just going to make you feel so good i hope so i know so i know and you're going I to tell me so. i'm right when you come back yeah home. well aaron's going to be covering for me in my okay. absence jeff will be of course picking up soul school um so you know everybody forgive me i will be back um i think uh i'll be well, I don't know. I don't even know if I'm on next weekend, next week or not. I have to go look at the calendar. But uh, anyway, I will. I love you all. And, you know, thank you for letting me rant and rave. You know, I'm I'm so far left. I'm right about everything. But, you know, that there's that. And um, <laughs> and, and uh, I just I love you all. Let's get through this together. Let's just get through this together and love each other powerfully. And each of us strive to be the light that we seek always. And I love you very much, Bill. Thank you for making this show possible for me. Happy fourth to everyone. Be safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time. Land of the free, home of the what? Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, free if you're a white male. Yeah, you're free as hell. You know, the rest of us are screwed. All right, um, love you. <laughs> have a great